far in today's show, we've looked at how our generally high-tech, electricity, easy lives are being transformed by new innovations. In the developing world, however, life is a lot different. For so many people, you can't just flick a switch and get power. Take cooking. The fuel is firewood instead. But now, the solution for developing countries could come from an energy source they have in abundance, the sun. More from Energy Now Chief Correspondent Tyler Suters in South Africa. Here's the Sun 515. Here are the kettles. For a man on a mission, Crosby Menzies is packing light. I guess I'm an environmentalist by nature, but I don't think environmentalist quite covers it. It's humanist. It's human to want everybody to be okay. Which is why he's leaving South Africa's big cities, home to some of the world's worst slums, and driving deep into the countryside. I guess if you live in Africa, you're faced with situations every day that are kind of heartrending, and you're always looking for ways to make it better. Menzies is a clean energy entrepreneur, helping Africans who rely on firewood for cooking. And in South Africa's rural areas, that's about half the population. So in Southern Africa, it's the least grid connected place of any region on the planet. Now we can just do it here. Eh? So his company, Sunfire Solutions, delivers these solar cookers. The solar cooker swings 360 degrees. So you can turn it away from the sun. You can do your stirring. You can add your salt and your spices. And then the idea is that you just turn it back to the sun. A way to cook food by tapping an abundant source of energy. Discovery or the creation of fire has been what sustained human development all the way since we left Africa. Mm -hmm. So now we're bringing in something that can take the fire from the sun and cook your food every single day. It's revolutionary. But it's not really... all of us left Africa, right? Not all of us. <laughs> Some of us have returned uh, with paler skin. <laughs> Menzi's quest aside, this is a problem that extends well beyond the borders of South Africa. You've got three billion people who are dependent on traditional forms of uh, traditional stoves and rudimentary forms of cooking. Radha Muthia is executive director of the Global Alliance for Clean Cookstoves. The public-private partnership is now putting millions of cleaner stoves, like these, in unelectrified places around the world. We've set a goal of 100 million households adopting clean cooking solutions by the year 2020. And how far along that road are you well, right now? Well, today the numbers vary, but we think it's somewhere between two and a half and perhaps three million clean cooking solutions that are out there. So a long way to it's go. a long way to go, but there's a start. A way, according to the Alliance, to combat climate change. How much wood do you usually use? Uh, I use too much the wood. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you cut it from this well, area? Yeah, all the area. Sibusisu Mkeze is a sustenance farmer, growing enough food for himself and his family, sending what's left to a local co-op market. Mkeze is the recipient of Menzi's latest delivery, the Sunfire 12 solar cooker, and the free sunglasses that come with it. But it's just for now, so you can see. <laughs> Christmas. Hey, look together it's now. Christmas. <laughs> Sunglasses firmly in place. Mkize proves he's a quick study. When the sun is this side, so you have to say this one to be turning and facing the other side. So you point it just right at the bottom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, can, I can see the steam coming yeah, up. Yeah, I can now. see now it's hot now. 8,500 miles away and 60 degrees colder, another solar cooker sits in the front yard of a different chef. This looks unbelievably strange, and I'm not gonna lie to you. Jose Andres is a celebrity chef. He has nationally known restaurants in Washington and Los Angeles, and a growing culinary empire. But at heart... I think I'm a clean energy dreamer. Andres is culinary ambassador for the Global Alliance for Clean Cookstoves. Not just a big name, he's also pushing big ideas. He thought of painting this solar cooking pot black to better capture heat. It's unbelievable. I'm able to cook one kilo. In this case, I can fit here two kilos of chickpeas, which is a very hard, a very, a very hard bean to, to cook mm -hmm. in, in an hour, in an hour and 10 minutes, only with the sun. It's almost the same time it's going to be taking me in my kitchen huh. using gas. But Andres is realistic. He says widespread acceptance of solar cookers will take time. To think that anyone, anytime soon, is going to be changing like this mm -hmm. uh, to solar, it's a dream I would love to be in. It's a movie I would love to be part of. But there's still a lot of more things have to happen. On rural farms, some of the best snacks don't involve any cooking at all. Never fresher than this? <laughs> it doesn't get better. Oh, man. 
man, that's good. As a bite of grenadilla fruit attests, the South African countryside can be a place of simple pleasures and potentially simple solutions. They're not asking for a lot. They don't have a big carbon footprint, but let's put tools in their hands, something like a basic cooking system that just allows them to nurture the land and return it to its glory. The glory of ages past, using clean technology from the present. Bye, Mrs. Nkizi. Bye, see you later. I'm a In South Africa, Tyler Suters, Energy Now. Jose Andres is quick to point out solar cookers are only one of the options. Cutting down on cooking emissions also means using alternatives to firewood like wood pellets and charcoal. We discussed some of those options with the EPA's Partnership for Clean Indoor Air. That conversation is on our website, energynow.com.